Welcome back to more Panzer Paladin. Last time we joined the intrepid duo of Flaming Grit, no, not that one, on their worldwide tour of going around and defeating all the weapon keepers around the globe to retrieve the cursed weapons that fell from the sky. Uh, we wrapped up Canada, the prologue, or I guess the preliminary uh, level in the game, to get a handle on the controls and uh, the mechanics of the game. And today, we're going to be heading over to the good old US of A to deal with the second of the Weapon Keepers, although I feel like it should be more in Vegas given what the Weapon Keeper is instead of New York, but oh well. Off we go! Two arms, all right. So, uh, welcome to the Big Apple. Ho ho hope you all enjoy your stay. Uh, we got a new uh, assortment of weapons hidden in this level because each level has its own like unique weapons uh, located inside of it. Enemies, for the most part, are the same. Uh, there are some unique enemies uh, relegated to each of the areas. But for right now, we just gotta deal with like the little goblins, the little knights, and also the little bugs down here. But they're pretty easy to handle. I actually kind of like the little goblin dudes. They are they're, they're, they're quirky little guys. All right. Although they, they're kind of hard to deal with when it comes to the fact they kind of decide to choose whenever to to throw their little blades at you. Uh, the saber was kind of a little less than half health. Let's swap to the tomahawk, I believe. Yeah, it's a tomahawk. All right, nothing right there. Uh, oh, new mechanic that I didn't talk about last mission. I, in certain areas of here, you might see these blocks and you see the little symbol on them. The weapon type that you have needs to match the symbol to be able to break the block to get the weapon behind it. Unfortunately, we don't have any piercing weapons at the moment, so hopefully we come across one. Oh, here we go, right here. Grab this. Uh, oh, we don't have it. Uh, yeah, let's put the dork away and let's get a javelin. Yeah, it's a javelin. The javelin is the weapon I was talking about last mission where I said that there's a weapon that is so kind of useless yet it does have a heal for its spell, but for the most part, it's it's just not that good in my opinion. There's much better weapons you can get. Oh, you can also get a spear from that guy. There's much better weapons you can get with much better healing attributes as well as better spells. The small heal is honestly barely noticeable. Gotta deal with this little plant right here. Those enemies are kind of annoying to deal with, especially when they're on a platform higher than you because it's just kind of hard to... Ow. Uh, they're, they're kind of hard to be able to dodge their attacks to be able to hit the eyeball in the center. Which is why the game loves to put you, them on the spot right above where you uh, can't really hit them. Oh, you don't even have to hit the eye. You can actually hit it when it's closed. Is there anything? Nope, sorry. Oh yeah, that's another reason why I'm not a really big fan of the javelins. They do not have a lot of durability. They have like three to four hits maximum before they completely shatter on you. In fact, uh, yeah, I'm gonna sacrifice this to uh, get a bit of a heal back. Now, there's, there's something I kind of want to make notice of for this level, and it's the music of it. Am I the only one who kind of hears that one rhythm game from Rhythm Haven, uh, the one where you like you're having to shoot the aliens when it comes to like the, the tune in this level? Because I can't be the only one who kind of hears it. Yeah, there's a little bit of a heal station up there. We can get, get some power for grit. Just gotta deal with this plant real quick. Can deal with these two guys. Right, got a grit. Head on down here. Deal with the bats. And grab some energy. Uh, 
Alright, I am kind of worried. I think I might have missed where the, the hidden room is. Uh, yeah, let's upgrade the durability of this weapon. Get a little bit more use out of it before we use it for... Ah, there it is. That's where the secret room is hidden. Alright, go down here with flame. Got a couple of plants in here, but also we got the apparent eye of the Illuminati. Okay. Here, get back in the grit. And continue on. Now, unfortunately, Flame has taken a little bit of damage, and there's only, like, one specific item in the game that can heal her. Unfortunately, we have not come across it yet. I think it's actually a pretty rare item to get as well. Yeah, I think we're going to sacrifice this weak dirt to get a little bit of a checkpoint right here. So this space is right here. Uh, there's something special about them. That's why they're kind of right after the checkpoints. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't appeared for us just yet, but in later levels, we'll be getting a lot of use out of those screens in particular. Deal a couple of these uh, bullfrogs. I used to think that that's what they are. They kind of, that's what I always call them because that's what they kind of remind me of, like little like horns they have on top of them. In fact, they might actually, that might actually be their names. I'm not 100% sure. I do believe, yep, we got a club right here, so we can use that as a blunt weapon. Break through there and get ourselves another club. Clubs are always great to have because they are large healing items and they are pretty plentiful in the game. Never was able to figure out how to get past those bats. I mean, when I say I, I hear that Rhythm Haven minigames music, and it, especially in like this part right here, that, that's where it really jumps out at me. Kind of like this frog. I believe that there might be another space for us to heal Brit coming up. Gonna have to make some use of it. I'm just gonna keep the saber on me for when I need to use it. Thankfully, enemy these night guys are really good at dropping their weapons, so I'm not starved for equipment at the time. Though I think their spells, I think it's either durability or if it, it's an attack increase. But we do have a, a lead pipe up here. And there's a reason why I'm, I, well, I say I like those little guys because they're kind of silly. They can be really annoying, especially in their placements. The weapon durability is kind of in the garbage at this moment. Now, the unfortunate thing about doing this is the fact that all of our weapons that we already picked up are gone. However, the weapon that we had on us it was dropped at the point of our death. So if we can get back to there without dying, then we can retrieve the, our, our lost weapon. Yeah, I was using the wrong weapon. Uh, let's see... The falchion? Yeah, we'll use the falchion. There it is. I'm gonna wait for you to throw your next blade. There we go. The double throw. So the deflect spell right here is exactly what it sounds like. I It can deflect any enemy projectiles back into them. 
some of these things real quick. And right, no, not right here. This seems like it would be the perfect place to hide a weapon. But it uh, will deflect enemies and projectiles back at them, so you can do a little bit of range damage against them. Uh, that spikes. There we go, there's a new weapon. I wonder, can I get him from below? Let's see, lure him. Lure the skeleton right now a little bit. Okay, cool, I can actually hit him from below. Now, well, these guys are kind of easy to deal with. That is, if he will give me enough room to actually get back up onto the awning. What is going on up here? Why? He is not letting me get back on no matter what. Come on. Come on. Step over. Step over. Come on. Mm. Okay, now he's just toying with me. There we go. These enemies are actually kind of easy to deal with when it comes to uh, pairing them. I haven't really gone into pairing yet because the game actually would talk about it. But... Okay, there's nothing there. But basically, if you can block an enemy's attack and attack them at the exact same time, you will actually knock the weapon out of their hands 9 times out of 10. And you can use that to uh, steal the weapon from them and leave them a little bit defenseless. It also stumps him for a little bit, allowing you to get a couple of, of shots in. Mm. Oh, looks like I got a bit of a hike ahead of me. Oh, never mind! Well, as I was making my way back there, I'd... the horseman decided to pay me a visit. So, like I said, the Horseman is basically your rival character in this game. I like to equate him with Proto Man. He will occasionally show up and he will attack you and force you into a little mini boss fight. You do get a really good reward if you are able to defeat him, but it's a, only one chance to defeat him a level. If, if you lose against him, then you will have to uh, try a different level. Halberd, a couple of cheap shots in, go for the jump. You shouldn't really have any trouble uh, dealing with the horseman. I think the most annoying would, oh, the most annoying thing would be if you're not uh, timing this halberd throw. There we go. And for our troubles we get, ooh. I don't know what kind of weapon that is, but it looks pretty cool. What, what is it? Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. I feel like that is supposed to be either a Lord of the Rings reference or a Dark Souls weapon. Hmm. Uh, spirit burden is pretty high. Dangerous levels have increased. Yeah, we'll play with it. It's got a lot of range to it, and it's a sword weapon. All right. Now I'll see you back from where we left off. I don't know about you, but instant death spike pits are always the bane of my existence when it comes to these games. As you can see up in the corner there, oh god, all, all that hard work gone in an instant. But thankfully, Grid has a lot more health going into the next area. And I think we should be coming up on the location of the boss. I think it's like right after this area. Thankfully, I was able to keep our trusty stone cleaver with us, so we're gonna use that against Lilith when we already fight her! Oh god, oh boy! Anyways, as I was saying everybody, uh, we're gonna use that trusty new weapon against her whenever we finally find her in the city. There, there we go, grab ourselves a, ooh, a new club, thank you. I actually need that because I accidentally had to use one of mine. Oop. I'm not even gonna bother with dealing with that plant. Okay. 
can I get it there? Okay, no, I can't. Yeah, that's just a spot to resummon grit. There's the checkpoint, which I actually am going to use, so I'm going to sacrifice this Dirk right here. Let's grab ourselves our trusty Stone Cleaver, medium heal, defensa. I am going to sacrifice the Bowie Knight to get a bit of a defense boost, and we're going to equip our club. Oh, not, not the spear, not the spear, the club. There we go. All right, let's see how this goes. All right, so Lilith, uh, she can spin the four clones, and she has these knives that she throws. Uh, she also has the ability to uh, send attack cards at you. Oh, that's not the right one. There it is, she is. Uh, the way to tell which one's the, the clone, it, or which one's the real out of the clone, is the real one will attack first, and then the clones follow uh, suit close afterwards. Just have to avoid her, her killer hearts. Nope. There she is. Uh, she'll summon some bugs to create uh, little little slime pools that will slow down your movement as well as make you incapable of jumping. Oh, stuck. Got to avoid the hearts. Oop. Let's use this. Nope. Use it. There she is. I uh, definitely want to watch out for those poison clouds. They will zap your health in a matter of seconds. There she is. Wrong way. Double heart attack. Triple heart attack. I, yeah, you can unfortunately block against that. We don't have much left to do to her. Just gotta stab her a couple more times. Oh, she thinks she can hide amongst the clones once more? She really loves up that clone move, doesn't she? Eh, well, didn't save her. In the end, we won We won out. And for our troubles, we get her... Uh, I think it was a Pronyard or... Stiletto? I think it might be a stiletto because, you know, it'd be a succubus, so that'd be like the, the weapon that they would probably use. Did you see that? By breaking the weapon, you release its magic spell! And I'm still having a nervous breakdown! A holy blessing can remove a curse! A flaming burst can incinerate your enemies! Oh boy, do I have things to say about the curses. All right, well, before we head out and end things off here, let's jump back into the lab real quick, because we got a lot of spirit points we can expend on upgrading our health, so let's sacrifice these officer swords right here. Oh, it is a poniard. I feel like it really should be a stiletto instead, but not well. Uh, let's see, the broad axe will sacrifice, will sacrifice the pipe. The spear, which is surprising when it comes to how much uh, spear points it has attributed to it. I want to keep the clubs as much as possible for their good healing pro process. Uh, I guess we can sacrifice a Dirk and another Dirk. Actually, no, we don't need that many points. I think there was something that was like, okay, yeah, the Tomahawk should be enough. There we go. Upgrade our health a little bit more. And unfortunately, the price has jumped up to a thousand spirit points, and we only have two thousand. So yes, while we can get another upgrade, it would pretty much cost about eighty or ninety percent of my weapons. So we're gonna hold off on that until we get some more weapons in our arsenal. All right, everybody, that's gonna do for this video. Next time on Panzer Paladin. I think it's time we go take a quick vacation to Mexico and get some mid-Atlantic cutlery. See you all in a bit. Seriously, why did the mean streets in New York such a pain to deal with?